reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, women, and children who were old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that people might see it, for he was standing higher up than most of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra the priest, the scribe. And the Levites who were instructed who were instructing the people said to all the people, today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, go, eat riches, foods, and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who, the, who had nothing prepared for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, 
though many are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of the spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. You are Christ's body and individually parts of it. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and the ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and the news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, he stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found this passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I can see some of us uh, questioning what is Father Kwame doing with a paper <laughs> at a homily? And what is he doing at the AMBO anyway? <laughs> and why this formality? Uh, but I want you to indulge me. I am glad that we have this opportunity to, uh, for me to uh, talk to you in, in this particular uh, on this particular day and in this Mass. As we just heard, brothers and sisters, the Word of God proclaimed to us, we see Jesus Christ acknowledging the Spirit of God in him for the purpose of doing different things. The Spirit is in him, but the Spirit is accomplishing different things, liberating captives, opening people's eyes, and so on. So many different things accomplished, but the same spirit. 
We are the Jesus Christ. We are Jesus' body. We are one body, one body of Christ with many different gifts as well, many different parts, as we heard from the second reading. So many different parts and gifts, but still one body, one church, one spirit. I speak to you today as the person appointed to pastor this, our beautiful St. Charles Borromeo Catholic community to realize that oneness, that bond, that unity with different people, different people giving different gifts because we are all baptized. But we all, even in spite of those differences, we all come together, we all can live together as one body in this community. And that's what made, makes this community beautiful. As your pastoral leader, I am by law trained and responsible for selecting among the parishioners different persons with different gifts to help me in different ways to lead this parish. And those ways include the following. We have advisory and consultation way that is given to people who are grouped into councils. And we have those two councils in the church uh, that are responsible for advising and being there that I will consult and make decisions that have to be implemented in the church. So two councils. One is pastoral council. The other one is finance council. So pastoral things, things like learning, liturgy, and living. And then there is the finance council who makes sure that, that we, do not, we do not end up in red, okay? That we use money wisely. Then there is the staff who are the executive and those who are charged with the daily, everyday running of the church, everyday things that are done. Those people are here all the time to do things. They are doers. There are the, the, the councils that dream and that think and that look for long term and advise me I take the advice, make a decision, and the staff execute, uh, put to practice, everyday practice in the church. So the staff then help the various ministries, ministries of learning, ministries of liturgy, ministries of living. They help them to execute what uh, we have come up with. Thus, in our ministries, there are planners and consultants and advisors on one hand, and there are doers and implementers and ministers on the other hand. One body, one spirit, different gifts, different things to be achieved. Now, I want you to know that every pastor has his own way and style of putting together these leadership bodies to achieve the goal. There are so many different ways. All pastors are not made equal. Every pastor has his own way of, of putting this together, and, and, and all those ways work well if what they put together really cooperate with them. Uh, to achieve the same goals that God has asked us to, to achieve. And I must admit that many parishioners, uh, and ev in many parishes, you see this, many parishioners tend to sometimes gravitate towards one or the other style uh, of a pastor. And, uh, and that results many times uh, in, in parish, uh, uh, parishioners leaving because a pastor is moved, okay? or parishioners having difficulty because they can relate with this particular pastor who they don't know. Uh, 
which is, which is human, it's normal. I have moved from parish to parish four times and taking different parish role, to taking uh, over a parish, and I have seen this movie play out all the time. It is a normal thing that happens. People leave, people join in, uh, and then at some point the parish stabilizes. But only with patience can we see where this is going. So, so I just wanted to remind you about that, that every pastor has his way. Uh, the former pastor has his way of arranging things. It's not bad. I have my way of also running and, and putting these bodies together. It's not bad. Important thing is if we can get people who can work with me so that we can move the parish forward. So I want you to know that last week, I asked some of our pastoral uh, council members to change their focus to move their gifts to work in a different role in the parish. Uh, we call it, I asked them to resign, but what actually I was doing was to ask them to step down so that because I identified in them that their gifts are more suited for doing, doing things, actually ministering, the practical ministry, ministry in the church, like men of faith, like wings, like uh, singing or reading or, or, or doing the work of social justice or doing something like that. There are people who are really motivated to do that. That's a gift of God for us. But I believe that, that those of our brothers and sisters, did, uh, uh, they belong more to that side than to advising role. That is why um, it felt like the doing role was kind of interfering with the advising role and keeping us uh, back. It happens all the time that the roles are mixed. So I, I asked some to uh, resign from the pastoral council. I acknowledge that the decision was not made lightly, nor did I intend to hurt anyone in the parish. But in one case, reactions have been expressed in quite ominous ways on social media, on Facebook, I have a Facebook account, but I don't check it often. But there's so many things that are written on there. I want you to know, if you have not seen it yet, including misquotations, contradictions, and citations of different trends of events of the church that are irrelevant to what we are doing, what I'm doing here. I want you to know the facts. The sky is not falling here at St. Charles. We are not dying out. Things that are happening in the church right now, they are things that continue to happen because there are so many things we have gone through, like any other church, induced by COVID-19, but induced by other things. The change of pastors is part of this. And the inability to relate. I came to this parish barely nine months and the coronavirus hit. I never got the opportunity to actually bond with parishioners enough. I never even started changing things before coronavirus hit. And now that we are coming back, we should expect a lot of friction. We should expect a lot of uh, uh, troubles. So I acknowledge that uh, uh, these things can occur, but because things have appeared on social media, I'm alerting you about it. The sky is not falling here. I am only retooling our volunteer leadership membership. Our vocation to live a personal relationship with Christ and our spiritual gifts are intact. They are not gone away at all. 
our vocation to be Christian, each and every one of us, the reason why we forge a church is that each of us can become a personal friend of Jesus and get motivated in our own personal lives. That we can live as a personal Christian for our families, our spouses, our children, our friends out there. That is the goal for being in St. Charles, for being Christian. And then to forge that with members here so that you don't get stuck to any minister. Nobody should get stuck with any minister here at St. Charles because if we do that, our church will not last. Why? Because if the minister is moved, you or your church is dead. Get attached to the ministry itself. No minister should be sacrosanct in St. Charles. And therefore, our vocation to live a personal relationship is intact. No one needs to be on the pastoral council or finance council or staff in order to be a good Catholic Christian at St. Charles Borromeo. You don't have to be on the pastoral council. That one is is an organizational thing that I am in charge of. I have been trained to help shape. But what you need to be a Christian is still intact. And being on the leadership is not for wielding power, not for Christian spirituality. It doesn't make me a superior Christian for being on the pastor council or for being a staff or for being... A, there is nothing like that. We are all equal, gifted. So our brothers and sisters that I asked to step down, I ask, they actually have gifts. They still have the gifted people. They were dedicated. They very much are willing to serve the church. They actually volunteered to be on that and and except that I saw that they rather fit in the doing ministry. I ask you not to get stuck and attached to any minister. Get attached to the ministry which is found in the people and build a bond and your church will last. In effect, my action is to redirect the gifts of our sisters and brothers to focus in the area of ministry that will help build a church for the future, a church for our children, a church for humanity. It is an affirmation of their different gifts, not a demotion of their gifts. I believe it is such a church that will survive the current trends in the universal church. And I believe that every church is hurting and therefore we need to begin to heal our community. The healing that we want to do is not just about personal feelings hurt, that our personal feelings are hurt. That is not the the healing that we are looking for. The, The healing that we need is to be able to recognize our differences and still believe that we can come together and approve everybody's gift, but with one body. That is the healing we need. That is the brokenness that is kind of threatening our church. That people look at other people and say, you have a different gift, so so, uh, I am superior to you, or I am nothing to you. That is is the, 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 the brokenness. That is the Uh, sickness that we need to heal. That is the hurt that is going on. That is threatening to tear the church apart. But we will not be torn apart. I can tell you, I ask you, don't go anywhere. St. Charles has what it takes to realize all those gifts of humanity that the Second Vatican Council, the church wants. I can tell you that I'm not saying this because I am here. I'm saying this because you, these people, know they have what it takes to build a community here. So don't go anywhere. 
And I promise you, if you go anywhere, any church, you come back here. You come back, I know. And I'm not bragging about it. I have seen it, and I, I love it. And so stay and stick with the church and be patient and let us together heal. Let us t come together and we will heal and we will continue to build this community. I believe that it is such a church we need. I am about to go on a short vacation. When I return, my staff and I plan to take actions to heal our community from hurts, from misunderstandings, and many things that our church, and all churches, in fact, have gone through due to COVID-19 and losses of all kinds. I would like to thank you, and may God bless you. May God bless our ministries and keep you in peace and love while I am away. Amen.